Previously on Magi RPG's World of Darkness Stories. Well, for tonight's story, Wellness & Co. employees are reeling after a bizarre dog attack took place last night at one of their Berwyn facilities. Your name is? You call me Finn. Ben. Staff members were left shaken and confused when they reported to work the following day to see the entire facility destroyed overnight. You see, I'm looking for somebody. Is he a good friend? A bad friend? He's a friend. He's real family. The Berwyn facility was once a medical facility open to the public, but was closed down and is now used for Wellness & Co. storage and research. Our packs, um, we don't really have any leadership. We listen to the, uh, the youngest pup up to the oldest one. My daughter, she, uh, she insisted that instead of ripping you two limb from limb, we have this little parlay. Police believe the attack might have had motive and are looking into illegal dog rings who might have been behind the attack. You can fight. <laughs> you could try. But know that if that happens, maybe, um, and he turns to shop, maybe history repeats itself. whispers secrets through the concrete canyons of Chicago. Secrets of a world hidden beneath the smog and the steel. You catch a whiff of it sometimes, carried on the breeze just before dawn, the scent of the damp earth, the howl echoing from forgotten forests. It stirs something deep within you, a yearning you can't quite place. Maybe it's the nightmares, vivid and savage, where moonlight paints your reflection onto the asphalt, where claws rip through your clothes and fur sprouts on your skin. You wake in a cold sweat, heart hammering, but the memory fades, leaving behind a gnawing unease. Or maybe it's the rage simmering just beneath the surface, the anger at the world's decay, the pollution choking the sky the greed devouring everything that is green. It boils over sometimes, but does spill out in unexpected bursts, leaving you confused, maybe ashamed. What was it like when your first change took place? For Fen, it was under the half moon, guided by a stag. For Joe, under the full moon, guided by a griffin. For Jazz, under the new moon, guided by a stag. And for Emery, under the new moon, guided by a rat. For each of you on those nights, the moon hangs heavy. You feel its pull, undeniable tug at your soul. Something primal awoke in you, a hunger you couldn't ignore. That night, under the moon's silver gaze, the truth whispered your name. You are no longer just you. You are Garu, a shapeshifter, a warrior be born between rage and moonlight. 
You are a child of Gaia, protector of this earth in her final hours. The worm, the embodiment of corruption and destruction, is spreading its blight across the world. You've seen it in Chicago, the corporations that strip the land bare, the city spew poison into the air, and many of the rich elite bringing it to its own ruin, marching it toward oblivion. You stand at the precipice torn between these two worlds, the human life you've built and that fury burning within. But the choice is not yours alone. None of you are lone wolves here. You work together in a pack and you work with other Garu, though scattered and divided at this point, you all fight this desperate battle against agents of the worm. Their whispers, your fellow Garu, reach you in the wind, calling for unity, for the strength to weather the storm. And now, you challenge your own selves and embrace, ask if you will embrace that beast within, that rage within, or will you turn away, thinking that all is lost and you can't work for anything. As Garu, the world hangs in balance and the time for hiding is over. It's time for rage, fury, and the fight for survival. It begins now. We cut to Chicago, glimmering city, rainy streets, a medical facility in Berwyn. Fen, you stand in this medical building. You see the large room surrounding you with sterile tools. Confused, you don't remember how you got here. Your mind is clouded. Then it hits you. Your mind was clouded by the taint of the worm. But you do know one thing, you feel rage. You clutch your friend, Emery, your packmate. A crinkled hand, uh, in, in your hand, a crinkled paper. The paper reads, Fen, Caden Bartlett put you here. Wellness and Co. is a shell. Your friend, the Nas. Emery, you slowly gain consciousness. You begin to gather your bearings. You see Fen in front of you. The two of you look at each other for a moment. How's your nap? What? All right, get up slow. Take it easy. Remember, you then, don't have an arm. How could I forget? Then it hits you, Emery. It hits you. The fury of what has just happened. The rage of what has just happened. You look around the room and you see other wolves in the same situation that you were in. The anger, it builds up. You were put here by somebody. You were captured. They captured you. They tormented you. They experimented on you. You don't know what they did, but all you can feel is the primal rage within you. And at this time- How could I forget? At this time, I would like you to enter a frenzy. You fucking got it, boss man. Entering a frenzy. In Werewolf the Apocalypse, you are going to, your rage immediately is going to increase to five, and you are going to shift into your Krynos war form. At this moment, Fen, you see a familiar sight. You see the sight of your packmate getting angry, getting fury, and beginning to shift. You know at this point you can't stop it, and you may need to just let him ride this wave. Ben, unfazed, watches him shift. 
And make sure that the other Garu in the room are unchained. It just says, A shell, huh? Let's crack this some bitch open. And also goes into his form. You also shift into your Krynos form. Um, and Fen, for the, uh, for the sake of the story and where you're at right now, you are at three rage. Mm -hmm. So you have to spend two rage to enter into this form. Got it. Um, the two of you shift. You feel the bones crack and contort as you begin to shift and phase into a large, hulking werewolf. This is your war form, standing at eight, nine, ten feet tall, a hulking embodiment of all that Gaia has trained you to be. In this form, you see around you, you sense everything. The senses are so heightened. You see all these sterile cabinets, you see vials, you see these, um, what are they? The, uh, the little the tables that they put people on, they, the tables. This is a sterile medical room that is tainted by the worm. What would the two of you like to do? Do I smell any worm spawn that have been here recently? You do. Um, actually, I asked what you would like to do, Fen. You, Emery, can't do anything because you're in frenzy, and so you're riding this. So uh, I, will, I will narrate some of what you're about to do. Fen, you have control. Okay. You do sense in your hand hair. Hair that you grabbed when you gave a pat on the back to somebody. You smell it. You recognize it. This is somebody you've met before. That rich bastard. What's his name? Uh, Lysander. The son. The boy. Yes, with the dark hair. Yeah. Dorian. The Who's fucking suit. He was swinging around a great sword like it was a wet noodle. It was embarrassing to watch. It was. And you know that he was nearby. You know that you don't remember the interactions you had, but you know he was at least here. Hmm. Then you ponder, but Emery, you immediately, upon frenzy, you are going to attack anything that has anything or anyone perceived as a threat. The thing that is a threat is this entire room, and you will do anything to attack and destroy it. So I ask, what would you like to attack first? Uh, what's right in front of me? Uh, the table that you were uh, placed on and strapped to. I'd like to stand off of it and kick it over. Okay. Um, roll me a dexterity and brawl uh, with four, uh, four plus four bonus dice added to your dice pool because you're in your Krynos form. I have rolled three successes. Three successes. You take this table and throw it to one side of the room. It smashes against the wall. And this is the first act that sets the ripple of your fellow Garu, who also begin, not all of them shifting into their war form. Some of them may be even beginning to get that more feral, near human Glabro form, where some of the tufts of fur and fangs begin protruding. They one of them rips into uh, one of the shelves and all of the vials come smashing onto the floor, glass shattering everywhere. It continues. The sterile scent of the disinfectant 
all of the metallic tangs of blood that were all around here, they begin smashing and cracking onto the floor. Fluorescent lights begin flickering as some of them tearing into the ceiling. You hear the guttural growls echoing throughout the sterile corridors of this medical facility. Is there anything else the two of you would like to do upon tearing apart this room? I, th I think Fen will uh, also leave a note, so to speak. Um, just a long, he'll take his Krynos form claws and just leave a long gaping claw across the wellness and co sign that is somewhere on this facility you see it on all of the doors the door exiting this room down the hallway there's different medical rooms you see wellness and co and you take your claws and scratch through every single door you see the claw marks the five claws scratching through and tearing apart these doors Emery, it wasn't enough tearing apart that table. You need more carnage. You need more destruction. Oh, are you? In, oh, okay. I wasn't sure if you're muted. I, that's I all right. Like to, what the, would you like to do next? In in this frenzy, mm -hmm. uh, do I have just like a I see red everything? Or can I, like, apply critical thought to what will destroy what the most? You see red everything. Okay. All right. That makes sense. Uh, I am uh, smashing every single vial that has something in it. You see all of these vials. Some of them labeled with names. Some of them have blood samples, some in a centrifuge, all of them destroyed, splattering on the ground. The glass cracks at your large pod feet. It doesn't even, it doesn't even phase you, the glass no, everywhere. Just... It doesn't even hurt when you smash through all of this glass. Even the cabinets with their glass windows, you tear into them unfazed by all of this and you tear apart this room carnage is everywhere fen i was gonna say with the smell that i have from the hair can i find an exit out of this room you do find an exit you begin following it, and you see there's a window that looks like it was jimmied open. On the side of this medical room, there was like a waiting room in the front area and a receptionist desk, and it looks like there was a window, and that window was jimmied open. Okay. I just break it open. You break open the window. All of the other garu here and there weren't terribly many about maybe five or six of them but nonetheless that's still quite a few as you probably don't even know more than five or six seven eight garu in the chicago area there are few and many between the fact that they were able to get this many is shocking but nonetheless you all begin to make your way out. The frenzy begins to subside at least just a little bit, but you still feel that fury of what has happened to you. You can't really remember all of what's happened, but you do remember being on that table. You remember them sedating you. You remember them tearing you open. You look down to see if there was a wound, but you can't even see anything in this form. You're not quite sure. You all make your exit, and I'm gonna have you roll to see if you stay in your Krynos form, 
it's very unlikely. Uh, it's hard to stay in the form after like a scene or two. Um, it will also, you'll have to expend two, ra or two rage checks. Um, so if you just make me two rage checks. Okay. Rage check. I have produced one success and a total failure as well. Okay. My screen. Sorry. No worries. Uh, one success on one. And then... One failure as well. So... Uh, Fen, you shift back into your Hamid form, your human form. Emery, you could choose to stay in this form because of your frenzy. Or you could choose to calm yourself down. I think uh, Emery would look over at Fen and just... <sighs> Where are we going next? Who did this? Where, where are we going? One oh. thing you... One thing you also notice, Emery, you look... You don't have an arm. You didn't notice it until now. Your arm is missing. I... <sighs> the fuck is up with this? Hmm? What? I... Oh, I I'm sorry. Out. I had a left hand. Yeah. You'll get another one. Uh, wh what happened? I cut it off. I... Okay. Actually, one thing, you begin communicating, and it's a little difficult in this form to kind of cohere pr full sentences. You talk... And, and Fen understands you, but it's hard to communicate in this form. Mm -hmm. You mostly just think about rage and growling and anger and fury. Oh, what, you mad at me now? I don't need that form to whoop your ass. Come on, we going home. And Fen will turn his back to him. Just no fear whatsoever. You make your way out the window. You exchange some information with your fellow pack mates, or not pack mates, but your fellow Garu, and plan to reconvene sometime in the future, but realize that you need to disperse. This is dangerous nonetheless all of you being in the city in the same place at the same time could raise a lot of questions so you all disperse you take your pack mate emery back and you begin to make your way out of the city it does take some time but emery you eventually calm down and the rage subsides and you do shift back into your Hamid form. The two of you make your way out through the city. It's, it's rough. It, it feels disgusting to even be here. And you see it now in your Hamid form, your arm, it's still gone. What happened? Oh, we were in a den of vampires, and I had to uh, exchange something in order to get us out. And you chose me? Shit. No, they wanted to just kill your ass, so it was either that or you lose an arm. What did I do to them? Oh, you killed killed a fuck ton of uh, worm spawn, buddy. Yeah, you uh, they did something to you. You caused a whole bunch of ruckus with them, but I tell you what, <laughs> they sent some uh, some rich, goofy motherfuckers after you. And uh... <laughs> then they're all goofy. Yeah, well, 
the worm spawn were happy. Some something about some anarchists or something like that wanted to uh end you. I and you just took it off? Yeah. What do I do? Give it some time. Eat. What? Maybe work out a bit. You know, you're a bit scrawny, so maybe it might take longer for you to you know I'm trying. get the arm back. Yeah. You know I'm trying. To work on those one-arm push hard to find time. Time. You got time to go into Chicago, though. That's the real Well, question. I got time to grow an arm, too, apparently. Fuck. What were you doing in Chicago? Well, you know, the job takes me everywhere, and I just... Oh, here we go. They're like, oh, Mr. Haddock, you had to go into Chicago. That shipment wasn't supposed to go there. And I was like, oh, like, yes, it was. I, I, I don't know. I, we all can't be in the forest every day. Some of us have to do more. Mm. Well, you did more. You did a lot more. Now, I ain't got nothing against you killing worm spawn, but... It was the ruckus you caused, and now that whole bunch of them are pissing the pants. So, yeah, and apparently wiping it up with my left hand. <laughs> yeah, Have that you... was a clean cut, though, wasn't it? Let me see. Sure. Yeah, I can. Wee straight to the. Has bone. this happened to you before? I. What? Why can I still feel my fingers? They're not there. Oh. It's like a, a, a ghost arm, a ghost limb type thing. <clears throat> Muscle memory, I don't know, some shit like that. Some of the medics talked about it. Listen, we'll talk about this more with the rest of the pack. As of right oh, now. Oh, it doesn't grow back that fast. No. It's a whole arm. I don't know. This is my first limb lost. Go easy on me. Ugh. Uh. Haven't you taken enough? We're going home. You're not going to laugh at that? Ugh, fine. The two of you make your way out of the city and to a small town, the village of Lamont, Illinois, about 20 miles southwest of Chicago a small town on the outskirts, brushing the Saganashki woods, which is where we see a bar. A small dive bar. It's a building on the outside with no windows. There's a large door. It's an industrial black door and has dozens of stickers for various bands and brands, stickers filling from top to bottom of the door. There's graffiti on the side and the top is a sign uh, on the front of the building that reads, The Nine Hells. Inside, it's pitch black and it takes a normal person's eyes it takes them a couple of minutes to adjust to the darkness if you're going, especially during the daytime. But inside, once your eyes adjust, you see a small bar lit by dangling string lights. The air is thick with the scent of worn leather, spilled beer, and maybe some lingering cigarettes. You see in one corner, a trucker in a denim jacket nursing a whiskey. You see a group of Cubs fans watching the game on a single small TV. They're heckling and kind of yelling at each other and that echoes throughout the, the, the bar. You see in a corner booth two retired older gentlemen trading stories, drinking some glasses of some sort of whiskey. And in the center, on the side you also see chatter and a pool game happening and everybody huddling around the table a, a group of other gentlemen in the corner and kind of going back and forth the music is a old 
kind of guitar rock. And we cut to behind the bar. We see jazz. What does jazz look like on an evening at the Nine Hells? Yeah, so jazz is usually just in her usual bar attire, just leather jacket and jeans and a t-shirt. She doesn't need to be flashy. She's just sweet, like throwing beers. So um, she does have a barkeep with her who's working that night, Jess. Uh, they're just, you know, they come in and help once in a while. And right now she's just cleaning the bar, making sure people are staying out of trouble for the most part. Yeah. And down across to the end of the bar, we see another familiar face who's here often. And sometimes people, when they enter, they think he's a bouncer. But he's not really on the payroll to be a bouncer, but he does sometimes act it if he needs to. We see Joe. What does Joe look like on an evening at the Nine Hells? Um, Joe is, he's, he's an older man. So, you know, he's got on what looks to be like dress pants and a, and a button up shirt and, and an old dusty jacket. He, he looks like he just, came out of the forest little little dusty little rough around the edges and he's hunched over in his chair kind of nursing a beer just kind of looking around to everyone you look around and you see the most regular of regular patrons john you see him a middle-aged man come on over to the bar and look over to jazz another miller light jazzy I'm keeping the tab open. I told you not to call me that. Do you want your beer? <sighs> yes. All right. Jazz. What's my name? Thank you. She's going to go over. Pour him a Miller. <laughs> <sighs> Don't Thank start. You. Don't start. I, but it It's early I, in the night. I'm not afraid to make you leave right now. Uh, but look, I got to I got to tell you, Jazz. What, what happened next with my wife, my ex-wife. She, uh, she keeps coming in and is consistent that she mm -hmm. is gonna take the kids. And John, I- John, I'm gonna stop you. She's probably right. You're here. You're not with the kids. I, I'm never gonna see him again, Jazzy. Uh, Jazz, sorry, Jazz. Spend time with your kids. It's not that hard. Don't bring them here. Do not bring them here. Where am I supposed Do to not. bring him? Not what here. Got? Take him what to the park. Here? That little park. Oh, you want me to take Kids him to the big parks? Park? Oh, God. whatever park. They like playing on swings and slides and shit. Look, I can barely afford. We're we're twenty miles south of Chicago, and I can barely afford the rent here. It's I Lamont, and it's getting pricier <laughs> month by month. The park is free. Just spend time with them. Go get a ball. No ball. It's not that hard, John. Oh, Honestly. God. I'm going to give you this beer for free. And then you're going to go spend tomorrow with your kids. Deal? All right, Jazz. You know. You always know the right, uh, the right things to say. I appreciate it. It's not that hard, but all right. Here you go. Here's your beer. Thank you. He takes, takes the Miller Lite, downs it. Why you gotta down it? Savor it. It's just, it's time. You're only getting one free one. It's oh God. Time. It's cold. <laughs> Savor it. Um, Jazz, why do you um, why do you keep doing that? I don't know. He's endearing. Yeah, I just don't make a habit of taking in strays. I can't help it. I see. I see him and I, I take him in, but he's got a good heart, you know? He's complaining about buying a ball for his kids and he just spent, what, $8 on a beer? He needs yeah, a fucking therapist, a not another beer. All right, all right. Don't yell at me in my own bar. I'm sorry I raised my voice. Speaking of strays... You see another person walk in. 
they stumble in, per se. This person, they look a little, uh, they look like they're already quite inebriated. They look over to the people watching the Cubs game and they say, and start say, hey, move over. I got something I want to watch. The Cubs fans <laughs> look at this guy like, the fuck? And this guy kind of waltzes over to the bar. He's kind of stumbling and looking a little, uh, a little, a little loopy. Hey, uh, can I, uh, can I order something? And he snaps his finger. <laughs> we got beer and that's it. He looks at the bar behind you and sees a full thing of liquor. <laughs> I, uh, what about something on that top shelf there? You know what? I got just the thing for you. And she's gonna go in the back. She's gonna <laughs> pour him a nice little tumbler. Not just a shot, but a little tumbler of a little special something. She's gonna come out and just slide the cup over to him. Let him take a swig. And she, as he does, she's like, it's a, it's a local, uh, how do you say? A local special called Malort. <laughs> Joe starts to chuckle. <laughs> I'm gonna pull up the description of Malort real quick for chat who doesn't know. Oh, yeah, we get some, um, we get some lore. Oh yeah. Upon googling, what does Malort taste like? This is uh, Malort is famously challenging to drink with a flavor that includes notes of gasoline, grapefruit, <laughs> sweat, sorry, <laughs> wax, fire, mineral oil, and bitterness. Yeah. The guy takes a sip, not really thinking. And upon the first sip, you see the gag. You see the wretch. The two of you see it. You know it's about to happen. <laughs> Joe leans to the crack. side a little bit. She's gonna crack her knuckles like, let's go. <laughs> and there it comes. He leans to the side, out comes the vomit. Oh, he I was ready to fight vomits, him. <laughs> he vomits directly on the floor. She like looks yeah. over and goes, "Guess you can't handle your liquor." <laughs> <sighs> Not all can. That's too funny. Happens every time. <laughs> A bit of time passes. Um, you eventually get the cleaning crew. This guy kind of hunches over in the corner and leaves the Cubs fans alone and you hear rustling at the back door. Fen and Emery, the two of you return and you know Emery in your current state might cause a scene if you walk directly into the bar just having only, you know, one arm, just a one arm person walking in. Fen, is there something? Well, when we go into our Cryonos forms, we lose all our clothes. So unless we, <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> we, I think in the, I think in the session zero, we picked up the right so that you guys, because I was, oh, like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> just, just two naked men, but nah, naked. Let's go, let's go for it. I let's was ready it. for it. Chicago. I was ready for it. <laughs> um, I think it's I, cold. Uh, I think I actually, I, I deem it as the storyteller because I don't want you guys being naked everywhere. Um, That's fair. That you have picked up the right as a pack that um, when you shift forms, you do not lose your clothes. Because yes, mechanically, shifting forms, you lose your clothes. Um, but there's a right you can perform that you don't have to. So the two of you kind of are at the back door you know you probably don't want to go in the bar. You know Jazz has a, like, downstairs area where you guys meet um, that you can access through the outside. What would the two of you like to do at the back door? Can we just, can we just not be here? What, you just want to 
keep this a secret from Jazz? I don't... She's working. I... Look, Joe's... Joe's You've right been there. missing. I don't... I... You're yeah, but is alone. this the right place to turn up? Just, hey, babe, I'm back. I just spent two days in Chicago looking for your dumb ass. And now you want to go hide. I I don't want to hide, but like... You hide. What's she going to do? It's like... Is she going to be mad? Can we smell them? You do begin your senses and even your ears. You can begin to smell and hear. You know this. It's They're your pack mm. mates. You know they're nearby. I would say um. the moment she gets a whiff, she stands up straight and she does like that. I, 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 um, jazz, 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 jazz. Let no, me... No, um, no, 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 no. I... Let me go. Take care let of the me, bar. Let, can I prep them? Let me prep them first. You can please. go prep Just, them. I'm coming back I'm gonna, there shortly, though. That's that's fine. Five minutes. Five minutes. Sure. Five five minutes. Okay. And like he shuffles off to in their direction. She's gonna just be like, Jess, I'm gonna need to take care of the bar for a little bit. I don't know how long I'm gonna be gone. Don't give John another free drink. Okay. You head over. I'm gonna give you your five minutes. <laughs> So, yeah. So. Uh, Finn. Finn. Oh, Joe. How's it going? Yeah. What the hell, man? Where you you smell? Whoa. You smell like the city. I know. I hate it. Where's uh? Where's Emery? I can smell Emery, him like, too. Hiding behind me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what do you do? Whoa. Mm. whoa. I don't want to talk about Fred. it. Mm. What the fuck is that? That is Emery. Y'all said go get him and I got him. Yep. I expected all of him to return. I don't know what the big deal is. He just going to grow the arm back. It's not me. Trust me. You know it's not me. I don't give a shit. He looks at Emery. I don't give a shit. It's not me. We have maybe two and a half minutes where is this boy's arm? I think, uh, Lorenzo, um, lasagna, something that big ass, uh, we have a minute and a half company. until Hurricane Jazz comes down these stairs and Emery's missing an arm. I I've seen I'm a lot. Joe, I've done Joe. it. I'm, no, no, Jazz it's not, is my I'm not, daughter. All right, you think I'm gonna be just threatened by? It's little not Jazz. you, Finn. Finn, it's the boy. Um, right here. Fuck. Hi, Emery. How are you? This. Um, here. Hold on. And like, I, I would assume they're in like a storage room, and he goes into the freezer and he comes out and he has like a frozen bag of something like it's like ice and he's gonna stand in the corner and he's gonna go 10 9 oh Joe, eight, give him his jacket Here's 7 nine. no 6 5 4 3 2 1 she slams open that door <laughs> <laughs> and, and she's gonna look us. directly at you and be like you went dark on me dad and you does she see that he's missing an arm um i he would be standing toward you can't see it <laughs> okay <laughs> i don't know where to begin what happened start at the beginning because it's it's been two days yeah. Can I at least get, go into the bar? Or are we just gonna stand out here? Just let's go. No, I we're going downstairs. We're going, we're going into the the cellar. Like, let's go. All right. I assumed we were there. <laughs> yes. Hey, uh, Emery, can you give me a hand with this? That's funny. It's not funny. It's not funny. <laughs> She's gonna large wolf cellar door. Bombastic side eye you at that. <laughs> Still haven't noticed the arm? I don't know, have I? Yeah, Do I see I, I'll it? get this door. You grab that door. 
That's not funny. Which is strong um, here now. Jazz, I want you to roll <laughs> me a wits and awareness. Awareness and wits. Awareness um, and wits. And uh, one moment. Uh, Six Emery. successes. Oh my oh god. god. <laughs> oh Emery, god. Yeah. I don't even know if I should make you roll anything. Um, but you can go ahead and try. Let me try. Um, <laughs> roll me a. Uh, let me just look at what. What about a survival check? <laughs> uh, <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> where's, where's my sheet? Um, just roll me a. Um, Dexterity and stealth. Okay. See if you beat six successes. I have a three successes. Three is good, but not enough. Jazz, oh, you oh. immediately spot this. <laughs> She's going to look at you, Fan, and be like, where the fuck is his arm? Where the right fuck is here. your arm? I... Supposed to have two of them. Thank you. I understand that. Where is it? Oh, why don't you tell her? Okay, I, I, why don't I tell, you tell her. Me? Yeah, I tell her. I'm, I'm telling you right now. I go ahead. I'm listening. Let's go. I cut his arm off. What? Yep. All right. I, I hear what off. you're saying, and I'm gonna need you to go more in depth on that. Okay. So. And I guess I'll just give the spiel of um, <laughs> the oh, basically the big download of what what has transpired when uh, Fen was in Chicago, and then yeah, yes. I just clean cut it off, Ooh. and it was a clean cut too for the most part, that like no nice true bone or nothing, you know. Yeah. So and then I tossed it to little doctor, little doctor vamp, um, and he called it, and then we left. And then we got we got shot with tranquilizers. And then I don't remember the rest, but we woke up in some underground lab facility. Uh, and then Emery broke some shit. And then we left. You cut off his arm for worms. I cut off his arm for worms because they were too stupid to know. Why didn't that you we cut off just... their arms? Okay, number of worms in the facility. Oh, I didn't know that was amount. a problem. Now, when oh, has that ever okay. been a problem? Oh, now, now when we... has that ever been a problem? Last time I remember. Back in you... my day, you sent me out there and said, "Hey, let's have a discussion." And let's not just go in guns a blazing. If I was gonna go in guns a blazing, I would have brought Joe with me, and then I wouldn't have I didn't had these. Realize problems. cutting off his arm was part of that. Can I go home, please? No. no. <laughs> okay. Listen, they wanted they wanted to try and kill Emery, and I told them. I'll give you a little bargaining chip instead, or we could start a whole nother war in Chicago. Hearing Emery be like, can I go home? She's just like, does it hurt? Kind of. She's going to walk over to the medical kit that's down there. She doesn't know what she's got, but she's going to look. <laughs> it's got some gauze, some disinfectant, some, Ugh. you know, band-aids, the usual stuff. She's gonna grab like aspirin or something. I thought I thought she was gonna smack you. That's why I got this ice. Just tosses it to the side. <laughs> <laughs> no, give it for his arm. Oh. Yeah. Why did they tranquilize you? I... He knows they did and I do. Yeah, they did some to yeah. him. Apparently, mm -hmm. they put him on a, a, a wild trip or something, and he just went full wolf and just killed a dozen, 20 a vampires. Dozen. You got you got a dozen? Boy, some, you got a dozen? And then some... You never some, killed any. And Anna... Uh, Anna... Anna... Uh, Alcus... 
Anna Prince. Quick Caucus. You killed an Anna Quick Yeah, Prince? something like that. Yeah, and he killed that one. And they uh they were real mad about it. So they sent a whole bunch of um, rich vampires to, to kill him. Good job. <laughs> good, good job. Damn, good job. They were, like, they were like whelps, though. It was interesting. Do you Dude. remember any of that? You don't. How is that possible? I don't know. Apparently, he was very it's, angry. She's gonna come over and hug you. She feels so bad. How's it possible? It's because she's the boys mad, are but... badass. <laughs> Joe. They're Joe. badass. Joe, really, Joe? <laughs> yeah, he killed 20. He killed 20 whelps and lost an arm. The boys are badass. That's right. Yeah, come on, yeah, man. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. all right, all right. Mm hmm. Now can I go home? <laughs> There's a couch wanna... down here. Just lie down I was gonna on the say, couch. Do you want to go to Joe's or the house? <laughs> you, you always I, welcome I at the house. You can go to the house. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Joe, you want to come with? I'll, I'll let. I can either close the bar now or I can tell Joe to close no, up. What do no, you prefer? No, no, no. Stay. Not, um, no, that's not happening. We'll have time. I'll close the bar. The, She's going to go upstairs. Want. Whatever you want. Whatever you and you're want. just going to hear this loud ass like school bell almost that she starts ringing. She's like, bar's closed. Get the fuck out. It's over. Get Close your tabs. Let's go. John, <laughs> don't fucking fuck start. <laughs> <laughs> the the Joe, patrons Joe. look confused. We got, we got three Can innings left. This, yes. isn't, this isn't new to them. She just closes the bar whenever she wants. <laughs> Uh, well, you got to catch the innings at another bar. See ya. I guess we're going to have to Close go to the up end. the tabs. All right, we're going to end the line down the road. Okay, see you there. Uh, see ya. See ya tomorrow. I'm just going to be like, Jess, you got it from here. Yeah, thank you. Um, Thanks. I'll, you can keep the tips tonight because we're closing early. Don't worry about it. Kind of nice to end early. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. No more John shit. Let's go. And she's going to head out. So you head out, um, and the pack kind of reconvenes for the first time in some time, and a lot of information is learned on this night. You learn about Emery apparently raging and killing vampires, apparently killing a very a VIP vampire in a group of worm spawn called anarchs and like the leader's like lover or some shit and so she is out for blood and wanted emery's arm and that's how he lost the arm but you do know it'll grow back in time but this is a pretty gnarly one it may take a bit of time for it to grow back but it will eventually you do realize that it is peculiar that all of these Garu were taken to this medical facility and some of them talk about the experience. A device attached to them. They don't really know much more about it than that. They can't remember what happened. Maybe the feelings of anger and rage overwhelming, and then it just is a blur. Emery describes this as well, but he can't really understand how or why it happened. It raises a lot of questions, and nights pass, and Fen, you eventually make your way back into the city to meet up with those rich whelps, ask them some questions, learn more about this note that they left you. You get more information that it is a company by a greater corporation. Bartlett and Zenith company doing some go very easy Googling. You see it's run by a man named Caden Bartlett. Turd. You, you all learn this name. You realize that Somehow, this person is responsible for what's happening with the Garu. And 
it does fill you all with rage. As a matter of fact, I want you all to add two rage to your tickers, uh, your rage bars. I got them right back, guys. Back to full, baby. <laughs> got them right oh, back. Oh, boy. Um, because that's kind of where we're going to be at in the nights to come. As the nights pass and the dust settles a bit, but that rage lingers, you realize that from what Fens told you, you can't exactly go in and have an out white, outright war with this Bartlett because if that happens, it could be another bigger war in Chicago. And he tells you, him and Joe tell you the stories of the War of Chicago that happened in 1993 and how many werewolves and many vampires were killed that you can't, killing somebody as important as Bartlett would potentially start another war like that. So, take some time to sit and settle. You're not satisfied with that answer, but you have to let it simmer for some time. Nights pass, months pass, and we cut to our present day as the events that happened was more of a what happened in the past, but now we are in the present. It hasn't really gotten better. It's just felt worse for all of you. You felt a little unsettled still by the events that happened all those months ago. You feel like something needs to be done, but you realize you can't just act on your own feelings and instincts. There are times where you have to talk to other Garu and understand what's going on. Eventually, some time passes, and then you get word via a message that a moot is to be called, a meeting of various Garu in the region, in the outskirts of Chicago. That's going to be a gathering happening in the, in the forest, uh, the, what, oh my god, I always, Shaganeski Woods, in a couple of nights from now. So you, you know that you and your pack mates will show up and probably discuss some of the events that have been happening. But in the meantime, you all kind of go about your lives as they would be. And I'd like to take a moment to glimpse at what those daily lives are like. As Garu, you can walk in both the day and the night and you have your own lives here in Lamont. So what does it look like for, hmm, who should we start with? Uh, Jet, or uh, Fen, you know, yeah, we'll go, we'll go around the line again. Fen, <laughs> what does a typical weekday, weeknight look like for Fen? Say a Wednesday afternoon. What is Fen doing in his day to day? Uh, Fen is probably a Wednesday afternoon. Uh, Fen is probably at the uh, the park, national park, as a forest ranger, and he is probably <laughs> teaching some kids uh, different things about nature and just trying to teach them to be better with planet earth as much as possible um he's pissed this wednesday because john showed up with his kids <laughs> and he doesn't know why he knew about this um, we talked about this john john can you at it's least good. change your shirt or something you smell uh, like just straight beer I can't afford to buy new clothes. Here. Okay? But you could you afford know how to much I pay shirt. rent? You, you could afford to come in here. It's like $5. The kids are the kids are free at least. Listen, I'll, I'll do what I can to make sure people don't notice the smell. But you really need to do something about that. Um, 
and then he gets he that's basically his afternoon comes home uh and for the most part he'll check on jazz at the bar but then comes home hangs out with his wife uh gianna tells her about the stupid stuff that happens at the for uh at the park and then yeah hmm. watches the cubs game and what about joe what does joe do on a wednesday afternoon to evening um joe joe tries to keep away from people they um a large group even going to the grocery store makes him nervous his hand starts to get clammy so he does go to the national park he keeps to himself stays on the trails he'll venture off into the wood and kind of ease himself he doesn't work because being retired retired military he gets a certain amount it's enough to pay for his small little place he's got nothing going um he goes to the bar he just as a communal spot for everybody and he just keeps to himself. He's always watching. He's always thinking. He is extremely internal, which is why he has that stoic look all the time. He's most relaxed when he's around the three others, but even still, it's a sense of stress and worry. What about you, Giles? What's Jazz's Wednesday look like? During the day, she probably is like just helping her mom out, uh, napping because she works nights, um, knowing that Emery is usually in the city, uh, waiting for him to get back, essentially. And whenever she's not working, she's spending time with Emery and, you know, going out into the city and stuff. So, yeah. Pretty much. Bar and Emery. <laughs> and Emery, what about you? Um, Emery works for uh, the Greater Chicago Food Depository, uh, which, uh, for the uninitiated, is a collection of 700 food pantries, soup kitchens, shelters, and community programs. Uh, he works in the Greater Chicago area, so kind of just uh, working for individuals that are trying to source ingredients, trying to source uh, materials, anyone that might need something but can't afford to walk away from their current position. He's the person that is doing that run. Uh, at the end of his day, uh, he is probably just getting done with his last deal, uh, just putting out his last bargaining chip. And then turning around, trying to head home, back out of the city with whatever folks might have asked for back home, whether that's something for dinner, whether that's something to pick up from the hardware store. He's the one bringing it all back in his bag. And it's the four of you on this night doing your usual things that you do going maybe in and getting food for you, Emery. For you, Joe, during your time walking through the park. Fen, when you had a moment of respite between sessions at the park. Jazz, when you were getting yourself heading over to the bar and getting ready to set up and it was just a moment with yourself in, in solace before Emery or the rest of your pack mates arrived. Something calls. You feel a pull. You can't quite describe what it is, but you feel something. The wind whispering next to you a feeling beneath your feet, the growl, the gravel slightly moving. A calling. 
And you look up. As the sun sets, you see the moon. The moon looks down at you. Get up. You hear the moon whisper. Your mind is clearer than it's ever been before. You smell the stillness. You hear the hooting of owls and birds around you, the whistling of the wind, deep, a snarling of the wolves. You all know that something is calling you in a different realm. A spirit calling you, but you can't quite figure out at this moment how to communicate with it. You just feel a pull. And it's, it's hard to describe, but you want to just step into it. You want to step toward the moon. You want to answer its call. But you can't. I have a question for each of you. Knowing that you hear the moon calling to you and you want to answer, but you can't. What's the first feeling you feel? The gut feeling that you feel upon that. Fen, what do you feel? Uh, sadness. Sadness. Hold on, let me make a note. What do you, what do you feel, Joe? Fear. Fear. What do you feel, Jazz? Dread. And what do you feel, Emery? Restlessness. Okay, noted. Those feelings sit with you for a moment. Sadness, fear, dread restlessness and it speaks to your inner soul and you sit on it for a minute and eventually that kind of goes you feel that and you all at some point reconvene at the bar this may be the following night as you all went about your days, spent time with your families, spent time with each other, sat on it for a minute. The next night passes and you reconvene. I'd like Is it to oh, go ahead. Go ahead, brother. If you got it, you get it. Uh is this at the bar? Mm-hmm. You all um, it. it's Yeah, I guess would I be would I be walking in uh, before or after Jazz's ship started? Um, I would say after, if the bar's okay. open. Yeah, <laughs> she she usually opens, yeah. Let's just oh, no. open the door. <laughs> you know, walk in. Hey, uh, anyone seen a uh, cute girlfriend? Maybe about like this high? Whenever you talk about her, she kind of makes us like, a little patty face like she doesn't want to talk about in the third person you say this and like there's like no patrons in the bar it's like <laughs> only been open for like 30 minutes oh, oh, oh there you are why are you hiding ah, you, you caught me <laughs> ah, found you hey i uh got those yuzus you wanted here you go <gasps> thank you yeah of course she's gonna yeah. take them and yeah. since losing your arm and getting it back she like always like goes to, like touch your that hand specifically like that's like her thing now like because she doesn't want it to ever like, disappear again <laughs> so she like kind of gives you a hand squeeze. Ow. Joe, you walk in not too long after this, seeing this go down. <laughs> Man, this Joe walks in as normal and he's he like the look on the face is. 
And then he sees that and he's like, mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Um, hey, you, you too. I didn't walk in on anything, did I? No, she's gonna automatically pass him a beer and be like, same old, same Thank old. you. <laughs> I wanna go over to Embry and look at his arm. How's it feeling? Dude, fine. Yeah. I'm good. Joe picks Joe picks it up and he goes, I actually came back really good. That's impressive. Yeah. I tried my hardest. <laughs> he grew it himself. I'm, I'm <laughs> sure you did. And um, is Finn already in the bar? It's at that moment, Finn walks in. <sighs> When when Joe sees Finn, I'm I'm sorry. When Joe oh, sees yeah. Finn, he he looks back at Emery and he looks at his arm and he goes, "Keep that with you. Don't don't <laughs> don't forget that. No promises, big man." <laughs> and Finn. I'm gonna head over to Finn. Yeah. Finn takes off the ranger hat, puts it on a hook that's specifically for him. <laughs> uh, hey, the whole gang's here. Joe, how's it going? Can I um, can I talk to you? Of course. Kind of shuffles to the side, like away from Imran Jazz, and he goes, um, "It happened again. This time, I um, I tore through half of the mattress." Okay. It's, um, it's getting worse. All right. Is there, uh, is there anything we can, we can talk to some folks or I can, I can, I can hang out with you for a little bit. Would that be helpful? No, no. It's, Welcome uh, Raiders. What the fuck is up, Woody? Oh, shit. Let's go, oh, Raiders. Raiders. Hey. Hey. Let's oh my gosh, go. You. you know what? That was, uh, that was silly. You know what? You keep talking. <laughs> Jack, um, can, I get a, can I get a beer, please? Yeah, same thing or something new? Oh, same thing's fine. Right. Thank you. I'll pour you whatever I got. <laughs> it, 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 it happens. I mean... You, you and your wife and Jazz, like, how do you, how do you deal with it? Oh, well, um, Gianna has no clue. It's just a part of what happens. But, I mean, Jazz's experience is a lot different than mine. But when it first happened, when she was younger, it was, I was just there for her. I stayed as... As close as I could, uh Finn, it's not that. Oh, that I what? can handle, surprisingly. You remember. You no, know, you just you know, our time when in the service. Oh that. That. That's getting worse. I mean everybody's experience is a little different. Not like ours. I think there's a reason why we we have the pact. And though I, I want to help you with this, I don't know if I'm the best person for it. Is this something yeah. we should we should talk with everyone about or No, no. They they're young. This is I hope they don't have to deal with this. Listen. We both took different paths after what happened back then. And I just need you to know that I'm still right next to you. I'm still right there with you. Yeah. And though I I don't know exactly how you feel, I'm I'm willing to to assist or just be an ear when you need it. I appreciate that, Uth. I do. Hey, that's what family's for. Yeah. Hoorah. 
Rough. All right, He's gonna well, take his glass and smash it against yours. Are you done brooding over there? Hey, don't don't break more glasses. I got enough of that. I'm gonna break his arm if you keep talking shit. That's what's gonna no, you're happen. Not. No, I'm gonna go put twenty five dollars worth of hoop of steak on the no, music box. No, you are not. <laughs> I'm gonna do it. You know what? I'm gonna do it so it. fast. Go ahead and he do it, Joe. He runs so fast when he does that. I'm gonna do it. I'm doing do it. Joe. it. I'm, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it tonight. I swear. <laughs> I swear. Stag, help me. Hoopa Stank starts I, playing. Why do you Why do you leave it in there? What am I gonna do? Don't you take I'm that sure. out of there? <laughs> Look at him go over there. <laughs> yeah. I know. The reason oh. is you. Who is he talking about? And the reason just, just is. You wouldn't understand. At, at 8 p.m., it, I'm shutting it off, though. Uh, no, I'll wait, take it. Man, the music, the Thank music you. video is so weird. Ugh. They like break into a bank that's theirs. I don't. I don't I get don't it. No. What? Uh. What? What? What are y'all getting into tonight? Just starting things up like usual. Like, why? Something going on? Everything good? No, I just. I, 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 I had a, I had a thought or a, maybe a vision or something I might want to talk about. There's nothing. Emma, you look different. You've it's been like, making this joke. It's no, for it's not a, a joke. Month. It's like, is it about the arm again? No, it's like, didn't you have like your tattoos? Uh, the one on your face is is dumb as hell. But like, didn't you have more of them? Good talk. You took them off. I did, didn't I? Yeah, yeah. you did. Yeah. Mm. Now, Joe kind of Joe, Joe kind of walks <laughs> over and he's just like, Ugh. "Go back to your hooba stank." <laughs> yeah. Okay. Here, Joe. <laughs> I brought you dinner for not insulting me. That wasn't an insult. That was that was banter. That was banter. I was banter. Okay. Joe, well, and... if you want to keep. Pumping banter coins in until I produce dinner, you don't need to pump in anymore. Emery, I'm sorry. That's all right. I'm going into Chicago and saving your life. Now, can I please have my dinner? Yes. I have rabbit stew or I have beef stew. You feel rabbit. Hey, who was that? Objectively you want for correct choice. Did, did he say he had rabbit? Yes. I'll yes. I'd like a rabbit. Okay, looks like it's beef for us. All right. Yeah, that's fine. Do like five, don't go over five minutes in the microwave. Do you remember? No, don't, don't, don't. Well, no, what? Don't tell me what to do. It pop, look, the container isn't totally microwave safe. If you put it in for eight minutes again, it's going to pop open and someone's got to clean that up. Just and when you say, time. oh, I didn't know. Just oh, I didn't know. Just clean it up fine. I, oh, I, I, I didn't know. I didn't. Well, now you do. Okay. Uh, the bar starts getting a little more busy. And one of the patrons um, you hear out front, oh, my gosh. That's so cute. There's nothing cute about my bar. That doesn't sound like anyone who ever steps foot in our bar. What is happening? You sounds like a customer. <laughs> you see somebody come, and you see, oh my gosh, there's puppies outside, little baby puppies. Like, I don't know, there's like little babies. <laughs> like, come look, and like this one woman, like she sounds like, oh, look at this one, he's so cute. What is and happening? Who's leaving puppies outside my bar? Does it smell like puppies? <laughs> it smells like puppies, and yes, it's puppies, not something else. Uh, it's actually puppies, maybe. Puppies, maybe. Puppies, maybe. <laughs> this my is favorite horrible. breed. <laughs> <laughs> They're puppies, yes. But are they domestic puppies? Mm, that remains to be seen. 
you look outside oh. and you see little baby. You see little puppies. I'm gonna look at the dads and be like, <laughs> "Why are you looking at me for? Uh, do oh, they oh. look like? Do they look like dogs or do they look like wolves or coyotes? They look like, like dogs. They look like they could be like all oh, little huskies, maybe. That's what they think. You're like." Uh, I'm, park, I'm a park ranger. I'm yeah. like... <laughs> okay, Roll yeah. a nature I, check. I, I was gonna say, um, no, you, you know you're a park ranger. You have. Uh, they look like not domestic dogs. They look like little baby, baby Ooh. wolves. Ooh, ooh, Linda, back up, back up. Uh, don't touch them. No, no, he's looking around for. Is for her mom. name actually Linda? Or are you just calling her? I just her threw Linda? out a name, and now she's Linda. <laughs> How, how many are there? My name is Stephanie. <laughs> um, three, four, four puppies, but you don't see a mother. You just see puppies. Those those are not huskies. Um, get get in the bar, please. I'm going towards the um, puppies. <laughs> but they're so cute. Should we should we call um what? some every time like, they always want to pet them. Every time uh, I tell them, that was it's fine. You Ooh, see the people like. The week. Go ahead. I was see, see, <laughs> see people getting like taking photos of like these cute little puppies. Um, and you're a park ranger. Uh, should we call like um, an animal control service or something like that? No, um, he is the one you call. Look at his khakis. I pressed him this morning. Thank you, Joe. <laughs> uh, he puts his ranger hat back on as he's back to work. Uh, now everybody, calm down. All right. Um. I just need everybody to back up. We're going to try and figure out uh, where their mother is so she doesn't rip anybody's throat out. Um, other than that, Joe, as my um, assistant in this situation, why don't you go hang out with him for a bit? The puppies? Yes. And, and he says it. He's like, he's like, the puppies? Uh, um, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to go. You. The puppies. I approach. Um, you, um, you approach, and it's, wait, why can he go by the puppies, but we can't? Because, Linda, I don't trust you. You're going to start scratching them and, and scruffing them, and then you're going to try to take one home, and then the mom's going to be mad at you, and the next thing you know, you're going to be on the CNN or ABC or whatever. Uh, okay. Um, I didn't know. I didn't know that they were. And I did tell you, and you did know. Okay. Um, Go in the well, bar, <laughs> watch the Cubs game, and enjoy yourself. All right. Oh, so fine. see how it's annoying when people say they don't know? Joe, you, you walk over to the puppies, guy, and um, they're, yeah, there's three, yeah, three, four, there's four. There's four little, uh, little wolves, um, and of, they're like a grayish, little, like, color with their little peach fuzz um joe looks back joe, joe looks back at at finn and he kind of gives him like a give me a minute look and he and he squats down and he takes his jacket off and he looks back at finn again like real quick and he's like uh, i um just give me a second and i go down to one of the wolf puppies and he goes Look at you! You're so cute. You're so scruffy. I just want to. I just want to eat your face. It's so nice. <laughs> and then looks it back at Finn to see if he's getting closer. And he's like, "Okay, God, this this is helping a lot." <laughs> just kind of like interacting with them. Um, Finn, Finn is looking at the tracks at the area to see like where these these puppies came from. Uh, just roll me a um. Uh, uh, there's a, a animal can maybe. It is, you know. I what, mean, just, Joe's Joe's making them animal can right now. Apparently, yeah, yeah. But uh, I have survival. Zero on that. Oh god. Um, maybe. Well, I'll do survival. Can intelligence, I do survival? intelligence, and survival. Okay. Is that just for Finn? Just for Fen. Um, and then for you, Joe, um, I actually do want you to roll me a charisma and animal Ken. Oh, great. Okay. Uh, three successes. Three successes. Okay. You are able to determine. 
Actually, you're not able to determine. You look around and you don't see any tracks or sign of like maybe where the mother might be or if she dropped them. Uh, there's no box that they're in. Um, they were just, they just, it's almost like supernaturally they appeared. Should I, I go help success. them? Uh, yeah, how, go help them. <laughs> okay. How many successes, mm. Joe? Joe's did? probably petting them. I got one. One? Um, <laughs> yeah. You talk to, you talk cute to them and, uh, one of them does begin to growl and show their teeth and begin barking. Arr, 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 arr. It starts barking at you. And, and, see, and Linda's like, hey, I told you. Um, and you hear her, her from inside. This park ranger it's... doesn't know what he's talking about. Oh, oh shut up. About. Okay, okay. <laughs> Linda. Hold on. Jesus. No, God. Goodness gracious. I should have just said something. Uh... May I please roll an animal can and charisma? Yes. Yeah. Uh, if you okay. approach the wolves, you may. Uh, yes, can I, I would. Can Can I give them the eye, like the wolf eye type thing, kind of like maybe quick shift little teeth? Yes. Um, roll me a uh, intimidation uh, and charisma. Or, <laughs> Char yeah, charisma and intimidation. Shows and you rolled six successes okay. for your animal can. I did. Okay. All right. Two. You rolled. Okay. So, Joe, you show your fangs a little bit toward these wolves, uh, these baby wolves. And um, they, the one that was growling and barking at you, growls back. It stops barking but it still is in growl mode and it's staring you down. And then Emery walks over and he starts uh, interacting with them as well. I have a little chunk of beef. And the food, sure enough, they go immediately right at it and begin eating. See, uh, you're the same way, dude. Just, you don't yeah. gotta growl at them. Yeah, that wasn't growling. All right, well, uh... Apparently these th these little guys just came out of nowhere. I would say that I couldn't believe it, but we are a bunch of folks that can turn into uh, monstrous beings. So I can't say that this is shocking. Um, I think I got a. Uh, a cage somewhere. I don't like cages. A cage. Maybe, maybe we could do like a fence, a fence thing set up at, in the bar. You think we could do something like that? I mean, yeah, we could just put like four chairs together and create a puppy fence. You guys never been around dogs before? No, I just don't want the little guys not to be bringing like dogs in the bar. <laughs> and not dogs. What do you wolves. want us to do? Can't just leave them out here. Why can't we bring them? Joe's no, already got I, one. It's, it's not gonna work. <laughs> All right, put them downstairs then. Okay. Okay. You uh, you entice them with food, uh, and I won't have you roll again because you rolled six successes. Um, but you do see Emery actually taking the lead with these dogs, uh, and these baby wolves, and uh, uh, they follow him with the food, and he leads them downstairs, and. What's uh? What are you guys assembling down here to kind of make sure they don't tear the place apart? It's like a a pen, right? With some crates, yeah. a just couple literally crates. Everything just are putting it in a circle. Chairs. Uh, yeah, yeah, like a, a puppy pen. A puppy pen with like I, I take all. I want to say ten milk crates would do totally fine. Yeah, I yeah. take all the bills and I lay them out like so they have somewhere to pee, mm -hmm. and just lay all that out. Finally, you smart. Just finish, uh. yeah. Smart. Okay. Yeah, that should, that should work. You make so... pen, food, water? Question mark. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Beef and water. <laughs> pen, pen brings down a, 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 a thing of beer. <laughs> no. Oh no. Jesus. Oh, oh no, you, they can't do. Okay. They can't do off. malt like that. They'll have liquid. Jesus Christ. All right. Amber, please. You, you really thought I was going to give this to the pups? 
This is for me. Oh. <laughs> All right. All right. Sure. All right. And you a have bowl. me. All right. No, just a, a bowl and a towel so that whenever they paw it, they don't knock it over. All right. All right. Joe, you want to help him out with that? That means you, yes. seem, you seem to have uh, found a little kinship with uh, these little guys. Yeah, I do. He's just like, he's about it. Okay, so you guys uh, make a little a little setup for these uh, these pups, and um, they seem to settle in quite nicely. You give them the food, the water, the little area for them to go, and you give them enough space for the four of them. They're tiny, but you know it's nice to give them enough space, and it seems secure enough. Uh, you leave them down there and uh, reconvene. I assume we leave Joe down there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I was I was actually going to suggest that I was like I think Joe stays down there and he just mm -hmm. kind of sits with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Joe's is going to be really hard if they're well. I'm not using it as a reductive term. If they're feral, don't interact with them too much because we can't domesticate these little guys they gotta go back yeah no no you're right we can't uh we we can't uh connect with them or anything climbs into the pen please sits down <laughs> next to them please? Uh. no it's that. fine takes his jacket creates a little bed and he's like don't you don't you i oh hello jazz is calling you you gotta i'm right you here. gotta go all right just <laughs> oh. don't don't Open your mouth. Excuse me? Excuse me? Excuse me? They will go straight for your teeth. And I that's gross. So. No, that's gross. Can can you can you fucking leave, please? <laughs> <laughs> <I'm> just... <laughs> All right. Look, when you come up being peed on, I don't want to smell it. We're gonna smell it. What are you talking about? Gosh, I don't, I don't, I don't want to. What is what is wrong with your boyfriend? He's gonna lose another arm. Fucking. <laughs> come, here. It. come here. Come right. here. Come here. Here you could. I thought we were all being problem. adults here. You're treating me like a child. You're a child. <laughs> Look at you. Look at you. You're, you're a scrappy one. You're a little fucking fifth grader. <laughs> Guys, I, I keep remembering this is World of Darkness, and I'm so fucking scared. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys like Hooba I know you like Hooba Steak. Ruin, don't ruin my immersion in my slice of life anime, okay? okay like, like, I need right, this. Right. I need this. <laughs> we, get, we get the good while we can, okay? Yes, 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 yes. We gotta get it all in in the first episode, because, exactly. yeah. Exactly, yeah. And the reason <sighs> is you. <laughs> All right, and, you know, so, uh, up the stairs. Well, well before we go, I'm just gonna like go over to her dad and be like, "What am I gonna do with the the wolves?" I mean, until I, I don't want to just send them out into the wilds. No, but what do you usually do in this situation? I don't usually have wolves that are not us. Yeah, well, 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 Unk's down there single-handedly domesticating them, so <laughs> you I gotta mean, act fast. To be fair, how how domesticated is Joe? I mean, if anything, he's like sure. a I'm... he's like a pack leader in himself. But usually, wow, you have completely to ripped off my entire sleeve. You're strong. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so <sighs> what we usually do is we try and find them a, a, a pack to join. If it's possible, um, in doing so tonight, I don't think that just let, just let, and you can like see it in, in your dad's eyes. Like he's, he's pleading with you to let Joe enjoy this. It's fine. I just don't want tomorrow to have wolves in my basement as well. That's all. It'll be, it'll be fine. I'll deal with it in the morning. You do know that Fen, in the next, I would say the next night or so, you have a moot, a meeting with the other wolves, with the other Garu. 
So that is something else that's on the agenda. Um, the rest of the pack actually doesn't know, since you're kind of like in the most communication with other Garu, um, I don't think actually Emery and Jazz have even been to a moot before. Um, so this I think will be you a would first tell Jazz. Mm -hmm. hey, um, so we, we have this moot coming up and we'll be meeting we? with the other Garu. That's right, we. You know, you've never oh. been to one of these, but you're part you're part of our fellowship and we need to make sure that I need to make sure that the wisest individual that usually in the room is also in this room, so I don't make a fool of myself. Why now though? Why not any of the other ones? Well, this one has a lot to do with what happened a few months back. Hmm. A lot of the uh, other folks uh, getting a little upset and anxious. Yeah. Rightfully so. Yeah, they don't want it happening again, and they want to figure out if there's anything we can do about worm spawn trying to abduct anyone else. Would we know if there's been more during that time? From what you've heard, it's been quiet since. Okay. All right. Well, I mean, Emery's been in the city a few more times for work and everything, so yeah. things are quiet. I think we stirred up the hornet's nest enough for what we did there back then. And now folks want to try and find more answers. That's fair. Is there anything I should know going in? Like, I don't know. Oh, uh, it's, it's a lot of politics. Swear. <laughs> no, I swear all the fuck you want. I don't care. Um, I don't know. People get weird. Yeah, well, fuck. Okay, so. Do I know if this is going to be on our turf? It will be, yes. Um, okay. It'll be in the in the Saganeshki Woods, so... So, um, so I'm, okay. Yeah. Now, as, as Heart Wardens, these are our guests. So even if they are causing a ruckus, hospitality will be met, unless other things will need to happen. I mean, you run the bar. Same exactly. thing. Exactly. It's the same thing. All right. Um, I'm assuming everyone, Emery... Joe, we're bringing the baby wolves. I mean, they aren't... You know, I'm, I can't leave them in my basement, man. I mean, Jess is really good when John's kids show up every once in a while. She's a real good babysitter. It's not the it's same. The same. It's not the same. <laughs> I know it's not the same. It's fine. It's fine. I'll just I'll lock it. I'll ask, okay. I'll ask your mom to come by and just check in on things. All right. That'll work. Joe? Yeah. I'm going to throw something at that. <laughs> Do you point. want me to bring oh, your food down or should I put it back in the down. container? Just let me. He's uh, he just. No, that bring it down. Did smiles. you heat it for eight minutes? No, I heat it for five. Like it's supposed to be. That's not long enough. It's not yeah. hot. Oh, all right. 6 30. Just. You took his arm. He gets a free pass. Joe never smiles. That is the most I've seen that man smile without Huber Stank playing in almost two decades. And he's trying to take it from him. I, th I said it was fine. All right. All right. I kind of I want Joe to run upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> hey, how much how much of that rabbit we, we have? Because I think Shania and then Filbert are like super hungry. They're like the, they're the they're the strongest. And then no, Cecilia, no, no, she's no, dude, dude, way too rich, way too rich. They get the beef. Shania, Filbert. I'm gonna Emory. remember that. <laughs> way too rich. I'm gonna remember Emory, that. If we have extra, just let them have it. No, let I. It. Their shits are gonna go everywhere. They're gonna be That's unhappy. Right. Well, actually, Felipe, Felipe actually is the one who probably that. shit a lot. He's already Felipe? kind of... Felipe? Yeah, it's Filbert, Felipe, Shania, and Cecilia. 
It's so hard to say out loud. Okay. <laughs> Philip Felipe should I say what I don't know. There you go. There you go. I, was your brain in yes. your arm too? No. All right. No. Check it out. Check it out. Okay. Uh, were you the one who got growled at, or were you the one that they responded positively to? Who's the one downstairs playing with them? To be fair, okay. you have food on you. Yes, that's the point. Wash this beef so that there's not too much salt on it, and they will love it. It'll be totally fine. And everybody's ready for tomorrow, right? <laughs> Ask your mans. What's up? What's happening? Oh, the moot, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I have to. Yeah, you go, got you got right? too many of those down there, man. You went from a man on man to a zone defense with them. I have. It's to, gonna I, be hard. I, you you have to go. Yes, Joe. Yeah. Um, who's 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 gonna watch the brat pack downstairs? Gianna's gonna check in on them. He named them. Yes, I know he named them, Emma. Oh, Gianna's good. She's amazing. Um, okay, yeah, just she's got to be real temperamental with Cecilia. She's still kind of sketchy. Uh, you know, you you can you can talk to Gianna. Make sure that you know all all, all pups um get treated if they need to be treated. Yeah, we'll figure it out. No, I'm ready for it. Mom. It's fine. <laughs> all right. He looks to he looks to Jazz like this. Oh, I'm I'm going I'm going to deal with it tomorrow. It's tomorrow. I don't know. I Jazz is like, I've never had to deal with this. And she's just like, okay. <laughs> and tomorrow, yes, indeed. Uh, you all kind of dealt dealing with a problem placed at your doorstep in, in a good manner so far. Um, but yes, you do have things to come tomorrow. You have a moot, a meeting of a sept of Garu, some of the many ones that you encountered those months ago to talk about what's been going on and figure out what to do next. But before we get to that, we're going to take a quick break. So um, everybody in chat, we will be back in about 10 minutes. Um, go ahead, get your, you know, your bathroom break, get your own treats, um, and uh, join us back in about 10 minutes to see how uh, the, other, the moot with all of the Garu go. Uh, we'll be right back, everybody.
We return to Heart of the Pack, our Werewolf, Werewolf the Apocalypse 5th Edition Chronicle. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, before we get right back into the uh, the game, I want to quickly shout out our amazing intro that you saw at the beginning. Um, that intro is so good and so cool and was created by none other than uh, a co-creations co of Stormbeard, a.k.a. Chris, and Helvetic Cat uh, put that together um, and did an amazing job putting it all together. So a quick shout out to you, Helvetic Cat and Stormbeard for Thank making you. such an awesome werewolf intro that we will all be jamming to for the next couple of weeks and, and probably a lot more moving forward. Um, so yeah, um, without further ado, let's, uh, let's dive back into it. So we're going to flash forward to the next night. Whatever you determine you want to do with the, the pups, you know, is done if you hold on to them, take care of them. They are at least taken care of in the meantime. But we cut to the next night. A moot of Garu, local to the area. You all get yourselves ready and head over in your normal Hamid form. You don't necessarily have to. I mean, if you wanted to, you could shift into your lupus form. But you're most comfortable in your own Hamid skin. So you make your way over as you are. And you head into the forest, the Saganashki forest. And the moon looks down at you and the forest stirs. Not with the usual rustle of the leaves of nocturnal creatures, but with a deeper, primal energy. In a hidden clearing, bathed in the light, you see the figures. A pack of other werewolves gather. You see some in their Hamid form as well, and others more comfortable in their lupus form. few wolves, few humans standing together, and Emery and Fen, you recognize some of these faces. You recognize them, the ones who were also taken to that building, the ones that helped you destroy it. They too look like they've seen the last few months and processed what has happened. All with different stories to tell on their faces. But you all approach. And this gather of werewolves begin. Fen. Uh, if, if it's in the woods that Fen uh, stays, he would have set the location. And if it was his location, and these are his guests. Um, the meeting itself would be more of a, um, not a feast, but it'd be like a little campfire set up and try and make it, um, especially if he knows that people who experienced what he experienced in that lab are there, he wants them to feel as though this is a safe community to be at, to have this conversation. Mm -hmm. So he'd ask Jazz and Emery to bring some food from uh, the bar as well as uh, where Emery works. Um, I'm not, I don't want to call it a cookout, but I, it's basically like a little cookout outside. It's a night barbecue. <laughs> yeah, basically. Um, Joe, you got the brewskis? <laughs> yep. Like... <laughs> yeah. This is like so a cool huge, way. it's a huge fucking yeti. It's just... <laughs> We're being serious, I promise. But it, <laughs> at the same time, he wants to make sure that, you know, like, like this is a somber moment, but at the same time, hey, everyone here is safe to speak what they need to say. Uh, welcome, and, everyone. And you do, and they all nod. You see them actually settling in a bit more, like they're sitting around this campfire. They're not standing stiff. Uh, they feel the warmth, and you're welcome. And... One of them, um, a femme presenting individual, um, they're wearing like dark pants and like a darker jacket. Um, 
they look at you. Uh, thank you for the welcome. Um, it's appreciated. I know our packs don't really talk much, despite us living all kind of near each other, but um, it's nice to, uh, I guess, officially meet on these terms. Nice to meet you. Uh, my name is Fenrir Waters. Uh, this is my pack. Um, as you're here tonight, what's yours? What's mine is yours. Uh, please do not litter. Um, and just we're glad to have you here. And whatever you need to say can be said in a safe and healthy environment. Oh, I never caught your name. I am Tala. And oh. this is my pack. And she points to the person next to her, a taller man who's got the long beard and white hair. This is Kira. Rudy. Z. The, uh... The lupus over there, that's Channon. Um, and then another one, um, another woman she has, she looks like she, um, she looks like she might be in the medical field. Um, she uh, presents herself, I am Ari, and this is Lyle, and we are of another pack. So essentially, from your understanding, there's three packs here representing themselves. Yourselves, another pack, and then this other pack. As they're like all introducing themselves, like Jazz would be kind of going around and offering like a plate of food. Like, you know, you want anything? Just let us know. Thank you. Um. Tala looks at you, Emery, and she says, how, how are you feeling since that night? <laughs> See, it's back. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. Yeah, same for us. It's been, it's been better but something still feels off. Something needs to be done. We can't sit and stir on this anymore. We need, we need to act. We need to do something. You know what that, you know like what that could mean though, right? War, maybe. Maybe. But what does it matter anyway? This, this city, this state, it's, it's already been overtaken. It's already done. Worms spawn everywhere in the city. The city belongs to them. What, what other choice do we have at this point? We have to act, we have to strike. So we strike. And we cause a ruckus, more of a ruckus than last time. What do you believe those worm spawn are going to do? Are they going to stay within their nest and cower? They've already shown that they're willing to take us from our spaces and trying to control us. I agree with you, honestly, that something needs to be done but it needs to be smart. I'm not quite sure what the answer is then. There's so many more of them than there are of us. And we could easily take them down very quickly, but it's only a matter before they overtake us. It's, what is the smart way to do this? Well, um, 
I hate going back to these days, but um, back when I was in the force or the core, um, you know, sometimes you don't have to fight all the battles yourself. Sometimes you get the enemy to fight with them amongst themselves. True. Yes. One thing that I did learn in Chicago was that um, not all the worm spawn like each other. Unsurprising. So, maybe we, um, we make something look like one of their gangs did something to another. But if we're gonna do that, we can't go in all crazy, slashing and clawing and howling at the moon. We gotta go through it smart. And stealthily. But that's just one idea. I'm completely fine with Joe. Don't look at me that way. <laughs> it's not the best idea, but that's one of them. I'm saying I know of some worm spawn that would be happy to see others disappear. It's one thing to get revenge and another to figure out why they're taking us. Why... Why us? Like, what What do we have to do with them? Just let us be. One of the gentlemen, who looks like he might be more of like a hitchhiker, you can tell by his attire, he um, speaks up. I, uh... I don't... I do make my way into the city quite a bit, and I've been prowling around, listening. The name you gave, uh, Fen, um, Bartlett, the company. I mean, he's the one that's doing this, right? What? He's got something. What? Another one speaks up. I, um, I was looking for answers. I think, I think Gaia spoke to me. And some of them look like a little questionable. What if it goes back? What if it goes back to something personal? This isn't just, this isn't just him wanting to take us. What does, there's plenty of other ways that an agent of the worm could use so many other things, all of the money, all of the power that somebody like that has. This is personal. He, he has something against us. It has to be. So he wants a war to start. Maybe yeah. like the war all those years ago. During the war, Storyteller, um, was there anything, like, high level that happened that me... Because I know uh, Finn and Joe were, like, grunts at that point. They, they didn't know much. But was there anything that happened that was really big where they were like, Hey, guys, we're, it's all hands for this because something really just popped off. Roll me just a... Um... Resolve and politics. Ooh. Just to see. Oh god, nothing politics. Uh one success. 
Um, you know that you actually know the war started by some kind of more renegade factions of both Garu and Kindred. That it was actually a it was actually a group or clan that was more frowned upon. Um, called the Black Spiral among Garu. And, like, they are kind of, uh... They don't really fall within the general, uh... group of, of Garu, the, the nation of Garu. They do... They are, like, outside. They do their own thing, and it's kind of... Right. It's a little wonky. And they kind of started it with another group, and it got, it got messy. And so you know... But that's really all you know, and you don't really know if that relates to anything that could go back to like Bartlett or anything. It's just like, oh yeah, this the war started kind of messy, and then a bunch of people got involved. That's really all you remember. I mean, if he does hold a grudge from the last war, that makes sense. A lot of people hold grudges from a lot of wars. I mean, surely, I believe the Anarchs hold the grudge against my friend here for killing whoever the hell he killed. But it was planned, is what we understand, and they're trying to use us as weapons. And hopefully we destroyed most of what they were using to, to try and make us weapons, however. If we strike at them, we need to have a plan. I think it's time we get more answers first before we develop this plan. We need to consult with a realm that is beyond this one. We need to think deeper than the world around us. We are Garu. We are in touch with this earth more than anybody else we need answers beyond this veil we need to go to the umbra and one of them stands up we're here as as a group, as a sept, as a as all of us, we can perform a right here to go to the Umbra, to go to the spirit realm and get more answers. We need to perform this together. And uh Emery and Jazz, you guys don't know a lot about rights. Um, I was going to say, I don't think we've ever gone to the Umbra, so she'd be looking at her dead like... Uh, yeah. Uh, and you, Fen and Joe, you have... You have connected with the Umbra in some ways, but not fully step sideways, as they call it, and enter into this realm. Um, you're familiar with it and the signs, but you've actually never performed this type of, or a type of rite that would help get you to connect to that realm. Um, so this, this would be a first, um, and, but you're at least a little more familiar with it than, you know, your, your kids are, uh, who are definitely, like, don't know anything about it. We are creatures of both flesh and spirit. We need to open a way and pass through. And whatever we find there, it will help us. Okay.
Joe, you got any other options? You keep giving me these looks during this meeting and it's just, you're not helping. Speak. We can't be serious, right? <clears throat> we're, we're just gonna jump right into another war, right? And now we're gonna start an entire brigade, brigade and we know nothing and we're gonna step through the veil to find the answer. Joe, they took Emory. If that would have been Jazz, I don't know what I would have done. So I'll tell you what. Say we sit still and let things happen. Is that a better option? I'm just, not. We just want answers. Let's go find them. And then what, Finn? And then what? We what? We go charging into the city. We rip more worms' heads off. For what? For one of them to survive? To make more? And to find us here? You want to just give up? I'm not giving up, Finn. But this doesn't seem smart. This doesn't seem like your smart option. Look, and he like physically spins him around. Look at us. This is your squadron? They took Emery and his arm. You did. And he physically turns him over to Jazz. You're going to put that? You're going to put that in front of what we've seen? I either put that in front of what we've seen or I let it come crashing towards her. At least in one of those situations, she'll be ready. You heard it. Chicago is infested. I don't want that spreading out to our homes. All right. All right. That's fine. We just, we just want answers. That's it. If Gaia has something to say, I'm willing to listen. Fine. Then I'm willing to listen to you. Thank you, Joe. Before we begin this right, does anybody need to howl at the moon? And in a mechanics, basically, you will need rage, rage to perform this. Um, and a way to gain rage is to howl at the moon. Um, so, uh, if I would say, um, I believe you all have a decent amount of rage at this point because we haven't spent any. Um, but you could potentially gain more rage just in case like something goes wrong when you all are rolling and you may lose rage. And if you go to zero, that's bad because you lose the wolf and you can't perform any rights. You can't do anything. Um, so does anybody feel they want to howl at the moon? Before how, how they we... all jump in, because I they are <laughs> they are <laughs> biting at the bit right now. I'm waiting. <laughs> how much rage do we need? Because, like for example, we have two right now. Is that enough? Do we need more? Um, do 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 do. Let's see. Um, I would say I mean you would need. Uh, must have at least one. Everybody in it must have at least one point of rage. Um, so you need at least one, um, but if for some reason you roll poorly, you could lose rage. So, 
And you don't know what's going to happen in the spirit world uh, if you might need some rage to do some things. So I'm just throwing these options out there. You could... It's... that. That's what you're looking at right I mean, now. Two more rage would be nice. <laughs> would be I, mean, I mean, so mechanically, like, is there any benefit to not howl at the moon? You could lose the rage. That's what. That's what. Yeah. Um, and that. Yeah. Uh, right now you have two. Be... So if you roll and you have fails, you could lose those two. Correct. Yes. Oh, I've got four. Oh. Yeah, you're what? probably good, Emery. Because the other thing is, if Let you go know. to f <laughs> if you go to five and then you get more rage, you also go into a danger territory. You start losing willpower. So you basically you want to <laughs> always maintain like a healthy balance of like not zero but not five. So you don't want to go too hard into the into the rage paint, but you also don't want to be a softie. Rage paint. <laughs> <laughs> is that what we're don't calling? get lost in the rage sauce. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just. Uh, I'm looking for. I'm looking. I'm looking to be like ragey locks, like not too much <laughs> or not too. Exactly. Just okay. Right. Yeah. And it's and it's just a single rage point since the months ago that I hit five, or do like you know do they reduce after a fortnight? They do reduce um, in time. Um, okay. So you know, I'm. You know what? Roll me a D5. Um, a D5? The D10 divided by two. Yep. Okay. Uh, yeah, say D5. Where's the D5 in Foundry? Just roll a D10 and divide by two. Bro, help me. Just look Bro, up the dice me. roller. That's what I do. All right, yeah, just Google a dice roller and roll a D5. Google Good TTRPG players, you don't have a D5? Roller? What kind of question is this? <laughs> I got a D10. Nice, it's all the way over there, though. Do I? <laughs> oh, I keep that thing on me. Simple, uh. <laughs> just, just just how? Just, just. <laughs> I have rolled a 10. Oh my god. I shouldn't have done this. <laughs> I was going to see how much rage you would have over time. Oh, and, shit. <laughs> um, you are full of rage. The five angry hero. would have been you have five rage and one would have been you had one rage. Um, okay. You rolled a five, so you have five rage. All right. Emery, you're just honestly. I don't know. Yeah, you're upset pissed. with the I'm world pissed. still. Yeah. Just like... I mean, you were affected the most out of everybody in the pack, so you are pretty full of like this. You're pretty unsettled, so yeah, you're a five rage. You probably shouldn't howl. Plus, you oh. got. Fen and Joe constantly cracking jokes about your arms. So. <laughs> and it's okay. You don't have to. Um, you can stay at where you are. Okay. I will welcome any Garu who wants to. Mm -hmm. um, I think I think Fen keeps. You see those who are in their lupus form. Um, they uh, start to head out toward uh, uh, toward it like a, a hill toward the back, um, and you can see them in the distance getting ready to howl at the moon. Does anybody join them? Joe joins them. Okay. He kind of he looks at everybody and he takes his jacket off and he's <sighs> all right. <laughs> He goes. Yes, we'll go with and be like, all right. <laughs> Guess we're done. Um, for the two of you, uh, and I won't make you spend any rage for this. This is more just a narrative thing. Um, do you feel more comfortable in your other form, your your lupus form, when you do this? Yeah, Joe. So when Joe takes his when Joe takes his jacket off, he because he's been in this wood before he starts to run like he's he's full on running and he goes mid run into his lupus form and just keeps running what does joe's lupus form look like what kind of wolf does he look like <sighs> joe joe is 
a he's it's a shade of brown almost amber but there is a black stripe a very thick black stripe that has kind of notches in it that goes across the side of him which is represent representing um his his mokul that he has across his chest and over his arm so the stripe goes across his chest and down one of his arms and it will form and it's black and it's notched stripe and um he has it also coming over one side of his face for jazz jazz has kind of been sheltered a lot from the wolf politics if you will so she spent most of her time as a human and like this is like her first time really like coming to moods and talking politics and stuff so she would probably stay in her uh human Hamid form, form. Yeah. yeah Hamid form mm -hmm. um and she's kind of she's usually like pretty stern and like got her shit together and she's just kind of like out of her element a little bit she's like all right uh here we go <laughs> And you join your fellow Garu, and you kind of spend that time. It, it maybe for you, especially Jazz, doesn't feel super comfortable at first, but the more you do it, the more it feels kind of cathartic. It feels good, but good in a way, not, not like, not like doing meditation or yoga. Like, it's a good, like, let it out. Like, I am just letting out everything that's been inside. Just howl and let it out. And it feels so good to just be who you truly are for just a moment. And as you take that moment of uncomfortableness, then you just let it out. And you howl at the moon. Oh. <laughs> Roll the tapes. <laughs> we did it. We did, we did it. it, guys. We've arrived. Uh, I'm just putting all the leftovers away. <laughs> Angrily and slamming Tupperware lids on. No one packages things. <laughs> Finn is just picking up some foil. Just like, I told these some bitches, guys. <laughs> Not to litter. <laughs> they and they do help actually. As as uh, servants of Gaia, as agents of Gaia. No, like they all agree yeah, it's nobody. not good to litter. And then everybody starts helping. They see, um, and you all get yourselves ready to prepare for this rite. You how uh, Jazz and Joe. Uh, you both get a point of rage. And um, whoa, whoa, whoa! I didn't hear Joe <laughs> howl at the moon. Yeah, yeah where, where is it? For? <laughs> where is it? <laughs> jo you guys, I'm shy. You knew. You knew what you signed place. up for. <laughs> you got a woo. I think Joe, like Joe, sees mm -hmm. and hears jazzes, and he's like, "Nice." And then he goes, "Oh." Like hey, real loud hey, out. <laughs> and now, yes, Joe also gains a point of rage. <laughs> and Marie uh, keeping him honest. Yes. You fucking got it. The right. One of the um uh one of the other Garu, Atala, she uh has a stone in her hand and she hands it over to you Fen and she says you will lead this right so that if you ever need to perform it again you will be able to we will teach it I am honored uh can I cause at was Talia there as well? Yes. Um, I would. Is there any way I can like s sense what that that taint that uh, Finn noticed or smelled 
when he was in the sewers when he first saw Emery. Do I notice that on anybody here? Uh, just roll me a wits and wits and awareness. Ah, uh, two successes. You don't... You don't sense that on any of them. She hands the stone to you. And... You all stand... Not really sure what to do at this point. And it's like an awkward kind of couple of seconds of quietness. But then you see her hand on yours, Fen, and you both grasp the stone. And you hear no longer the eerily, eerie silence, but a crackling tension. All of you feel the fur and hair on your backs begin to move up as it feels unsettling for a moment. But a gleam comes from the stone. And in this small grove that you're all in, in the woods, you feel the forest pulse with an energy unseen by human eyes. You he feel the wind at your back. Everything around you begins to move into a weird shadowy spiral. You see the trees move around you. And then you see it, a veil open. As the, they spin, it's almost like they were spinning open into another realm for you to step sideways into. You all feel frozen in place, but you know this is where you're supposed to go into this other realm. And the only way to go is not forward, but kind of sideways. You step sideways. So I'd like all of you um, to roll uh, renown and occult, and you can roll any of your renowns. So I think um, it might be hard to do it on the character sheet. Um, actually, first and foremost, everybody roll me one rage check, and if you fail, you, you lose a rage. And if you succeed, you keep your current rage. Success. Oh, failure. Okay. Success. The right will move forward regardless of your success or failures. That's more just for your own rage tracker. So uh, if you succeed, rage stays as is. If you fail, you lose one. Um, now, you, if you go to your gifts and rights, you'll see uh, your renown, you have glory, honor, or wisdom. You can, uh, according to this, uh, we're gonna be performing the Rite of Shadow Passage. You can use any of your renown. Um, so whichever one, if you wanna choose the highest stat one, that probably makes sense. And then a cult. And I'm not sure if you can actually roll it properly with this character sheet. So you may need to just roll manually. Um, or just add the modifier for whatever or you're... Add, yeah, add so, the modifier. Yeah. If so I if use yeah. glory, it's plus two. Okay. Yes, there you go. Yeah. So so this is a renown and occult roll. Um, the rights difficulty is equal to the local gauntlet rating. An active Karen might be two. Blah, 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 blah. The difficulty to return... Oh, we have to return. Okay, we have to... Oof. Um, all right. On a win, this has uh, the participants. On, on a win, this test allows the participants to pass through the gauntlet through nothing but their dedicated clothes. <laughs> so I guess you you will be clothed. That's I'm the good coming news. Coming out naked. <laughs> <laughs> you will be clothed. Trying to be a nudist, dude. The game won't it got work. so cold. <laughs> it's natural. Couldn't we have done this earlier in the day? Uh, I do have a question. What does a mm -hmm. cult use? Because it's gonna ask me to select an ability. Yeah. 
Oh. Ability? Oh, what so, I, oh, shit. Um, so I was just going to can... pick what matches. If you yeah, have, that's yeah, the other like, way. I was going to say, oh, if you have true. Yeah, two in glory, that. then, like, do one of the ones that is two, gotcha. essentially. It's, it's yeah. a little janky, but... It's fun. That's, yeah. Uh, Jesus Christ. Who threw that out? I think multiple people threw something out, because okay. I only had two dice. <laughs> Uh, one success. Two successes. Nice. Going on uh -oh. three. Yeah. Um, Was that a zero? Uh -oh. <laughs> He's got so much rage. Memory's just. I'm lost problem. in the sauce. He's, He's got so sauce. much rage. Okay. Rage sauce. Um. Should have fucking held the moon, bro. <laughs> uh, so go through again. Um, what's the so zero for Emery. One for Fen. One for Fen, two for Jazz. Three. Three for Joe. Okay. So uh, you step through and you watch the other Garu do this as well, kind of in sync with you all. They, You stand on one side, they stand on the other side, and you watch, you follow their steps. They step sideways through into this... Uh, into the spirit world and you follow the same movements and step through and it takes a moment joe you feel the connection very quickly and you step into the umbra and you leave the physical world jazz you see how he does and follow fen you follow as well emery when you try to take the step, you feel something pull down on your chest and your heart, it pumps strangely. And you pass through, but you take uh, one level of aggravated damage from this. It hurts as you step through. And all of you successfully pass into the spirit world, the Umbra. Um, one moment, please, as I get this ready. You enter into a world and you all see each other for a moment but then it's just you. In this world, in this, in this world, it's the same as where you were. You see the trees around you, you see the recognizable forest, the woods that you know so well, but something seems different. It's like a reflection of this world. The trees, they twist and turn and contort. The stars, they look like they're right above you. You could touch them if you wanted to. The lights that light this area, it's in reverse, like almost like negative. The colors you once saw are completely different but you feel a connection with this realm and a different level. And you understand that this, this is a reflection of the material world you were once in, but now you're in the spirit world. You look up again and you see the moon. She notices you once again. That same thing she told you, get up. Get up! You... Listen. The command from the moon. You feel it in you. That urgency. You want to do something. You want to help. You want to get up. You want to answer that call. But once again, you feel stuck. And you're ready to reach out. 
Then suddenly it fades. Fen, you're walking through this forest. You recognize the area. You see in the distance, far, far away, a blazing, raging inferno of fire burning and raging out of control. Then you see downwind. You spot a small creature, an owl, a short-eared owl. You recognize this owl. It's an endangered owl in this area, in Illinois. It's an endangered species. You know that if anybody ever sees this short-eared owl, that they do not touch it. It is endangered. It is a sacred creature of this earth but it looks frozen staring at this blaze and you want to help you have the chance to divert the fire to move it away from this owl but you see nearby a water buffalo being pulled by a person you want to you realize you see nothing else around but this. You could use this water buffalo and the water to help divert the fire and save this owl. What do you do? Um, I think Fen would... I think Finn would just do it himself. He wouldn't um, go to the water buffalo. He would just run and try and scoop up the owl and use himself as defense against the flames. You run toward the flames and the fire stokes at you. You go to grab the owl. and it consumes you. And you vanish. You disappear. Joe. You <laughs> are standing in a, ca a cavern. You look a cavern in this forest, you see vast, large hills. But at the top of these hills, a mudslide and rocks. They begin falling down quickly and rapidly. And you see where they're headed. They're headed toward the forest. And the way things are depicted in this realm, there's, the rocks look like they are about to completely cover this forest, crush it. It's, the rocks are immense, bigger than the real world. But you do spot one area. You spot a, a, a trench within this mountain that you could possibly dig up and set the rocks to divert. But then you see a small village below. What would you like to do? Oh God. I, um, I let the rocks take the forest to prevent it from hitting the village. But it's reluctant. You watch and you ro watch the rocks slide and the mud slide, towering, larger, the rumble. 
begins to fall upon the forest, tearing down the trees. Everything in its path gets destroyed. You watch the forest dissipate and disappear. But the forest, but the village, I should say, remains standing. You see people exiting small figures from where you are and look out and look across to see what has happened. Jazz. You see a small herd of stags blocked by a barrier. They're looking on the other side. There's food, water, a grotto for them. But you look and you realize if you open a pa that passage, that block, it will lead them to a farmland of people who have crops, livelihoods. Do you let them through? I do. You open the blockade and let these stags go through and they begin grazing and feeding and the crops begin to wither and famine and starvation begin to meet the people. Emery, you stand in an area that has a beautiful garden. The plants begin to grow more and more. And it's beautiful. The flora is pleasing to your eye. You watch these beautiful plant species grow more and more, but they continue to grow and twist around every other thing in this area. All of the other species, all of the other plants begin to be smothered by this invasive plant. You have, you see in the center, the source, the initial bulb of stem of where it grew. Do you remove it or do you continue to watch these beautiful plants grow? Uh, I'd look around for a pot. You look. And you do see some, but it gets destroyed oh. by this plant and its source. I look around for a shovel. Your own claws would likely suffice. All right. R root balls coming with me. You take the initial roots and deplant this invasive plant the stunning flora begins to fade. You all stare into the distance after your choices. Fen, you look below you, the owl is gone. You don't know what happened. Then you look around and you see Jazz, you see Joe, you see Emery. The cavern that you saw with the mudslide, the stags and the crops, it's all gone. All that's left is a single tree burning in the center. You're not sure how this happened, where you were in that moment, but now you all stand in front of each other.
Is this what it's supposed to be like? Did you all have choices? I mean, yeah. I saved a bunch of stag. I think. I, my choice was easy. I removed an invasive plant species. I destroyed a forest. <sighs> Shut up. Uh, Fan doesn't say anything. It was either the forest or a town full of people. Wow, that's way harder. I think I caused yeah. a famine. Oh. The test. She wanted hear... to see... Yep, go, go ahead, go ahead. She wanted to see what we were willing to sacrifice. So what now? He looks to the burning tree. Don't you see? Don't you see? Don't you see? It doesn't matter doesn't what choice, matter the choice, the choice you make. You make. It's already done. It's already done. It's already done. The, end the end is here. Is here. Is here. Nothing matters, Nothing matters anymore. anymore. We are at the end. We are at the end. There's always a choice. Muted. Oh. <laughs> there are people out there, families. We're supposed to just... None of that matters? It is the it end. Is the end. The end of what? Is this how it always goes? This end. earth. This end. earth. This earth. Finn. Fuck that. The smartest thing that ever came out your mouth, Joe. There's always give and take. You can't just keep it all, like... What does that mean? That's the the end. So you gave us these gifts just for us to what? Fail? To give up? We are beyond. We are beyond. We are beyond. What can be what fixed? Can be fixed. You can't honestly believe that. You can't honestly expect us to believe that. Get up? Get up for what? To die? Yes. 
You didn't say that. You know what? Fine. We can't fix it. But be damn sure we'll make something new. Whether you help us or not. What will you do what then? Will you do then? My children. My children. What what's the tree doing? Is it just still burning sit, standing there? It is still burning. But you do see in the distance the moon. Above it. Joe looks at Finn and Jazz and Emery and he goes, That looks pretty obvious. And he begins to howl. Sorry, he begins to what? <laughs> oh, it's, oh. It's, oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> And you do. You all howl. You take this moment and for a moment, yes, you feel that despair that maybe this is the end. The earth is dying and no matter what choice you make, it is going to die. But it doesn't matter because you can still fight. You can still rage, and you can still howl. It invigorates you, and as you do, you see the world once again begin to move and twist around you. The tree shines a bright light that momentarily blinds you. And then as you readjust your eyes, you see it again. The forest, and beyond the forest, the city skyline. Chicago. That's your city. You know that skyline. You see it. You see the lake in the distance. The river in between. And you set your mind to that city. And you feel Gaia pull you in. But as you do get closer, that smell of degradation and decay in the air begins to linger more and more. It gets stronger as you get closer to the city. You follow the scent. And everybody, roll me. Wits. Wits and insight. One success. Two successes. Three. Two. Okay. And then roll me a resolve and composure. Where is Um oh so this <laughs> one um they're both uh they're both attributes, attributes so yeah. if you just click on one like either composure or resolve mm -hmm. and then you can click on the other one the other one one success and one memory zero i got three again nice. one okay, success three burn okay. up the caboose on these rolls Hey, hey, hey. Um, here. <laughs> okay. 
as you pull, as you feel the pull into the city and that decay, and you don't want to go toward it, but you know you need answers. That's why you're here. You're here for answers. And the answers bring you to a park, a small park. Uh, who rolled the three on the wits and awareness again? Was that Joe? Joe, you feel you sense this first, and you lead the way. You see a figure in the park. They are of the worm. The thing that repulses all of you. In the triad, there are three. The worm, the weaver, and the wild. The worm is corruption. And you sense it there. You see a figure lighting a cigarette but you only see the shadow of them, the outline. You can't make out the facial features. They have a gun behind their back. Then you see another man in a suit walk up next to them. The two of them sit. The one thing you notice more than anything is both of them have something shining on their wrist and on their finger. You can't make out what they look like, but you see that. You make note of what they look like, and with your resolve and composure as well, you're able to kind of commit to memory their silhouettes, though you can't see their faces. But you are able to remember where you are or where this place is in the city. The rest of you see this as well. You begin to follow Joe's lead. You make a note of this place and these figures. And Everything fades back and you're pushed out of the city. Your body's pushed back completely. And you feel yourselves going backwards, backwards, backwards through this, the realm, through the veil once again, and it breaks and shatters. And you're brought back to the material world, out of the spirit realm, out of the Umbra. alongside all of the other Garu. Uh, storyteller, have I been to that park before? It's actually a different park. Okay. After we get sucked out of the Umbra, Joe is laughing. Like, like almost scary, maniacally laughing. I mean, I'd say that was the first time I ever said fuck you to God, but I mean, I feel like me and you are used to doing that. You know what this means? Yes, I know what this means, Joe. <laughs> We're going hunting. We're going hunting. <laughs> ah, <laughs> and he just falls back on the ground. Jazz is just kind of like, what the fuck? <laughs> My chest really hurts. Why is your chest hurt? I don't know. 
Was that no one else? Finn. You said me, that before. Roll me another wits and awareness. Oh, shit. Finn's like panicking right now because he's this is the last time Emery said that. Wits and... Awareness. Awareness. Mm, insight could have, could work for this too, but... I will take... In can I do oh, insight? Yeah. Yes, you could do wits Thank and insight. <laughs> Uh, two successes. Two successes. Okay. You, he, when you hear Emery say those words, it almost is like it's not his voice for a second. My chest hurts. You hear the voice change and shift and corrupt. Something that thing you were trying to smell earlier before the right, that worm, you smell it suddenly on Emery. Just Something's like wrong. On his chest, like, hand on shoulder. <laughs> I do have a friend in the city that might have something to uh, tell me about that. Might be all that mm. rabbit you've eaten. <laughs> That's not how lean game works. Do people usually have heart problems going into the Umbra? He turns to the... <laughs> Sometimes yeah. there is pain That's that can be felt, but it is not specific to one organ. So no, it's not normal. Uh, okay, well. Sounds like you got heartburn. Come on. Uh, says the guy rolling around with puppies earlier. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you all sit in this for a moment what you just did. It takes a minute. Uh, you joke and laugh, and then you realize that you were just in another realm. And it hits you for a minute. And you sit. And following the right, you hear... You hear your fellow Garu begin to recite I shall be valorous I shall be dependable I shall be generous I shall protect the weak I shall slay the worm their renown the things that they know they recite to themselves it settles you and grounds you back to where you are and your mission and the things that spoke to you in that realm you think about it and you ponder it Emery, you continue to ponder, but your heart, it still hurts. Your chest remains in pain. It's not going away. Don't like that. And that is where we will end today's session. That's episode. Uno! One. <laughs> Welcome to the world of Werewolf the Apocalypse. Very different from that of Vampire the Masquerade and Hunter the Reckoning. Very different experience, but hopefully you all enjoyed it. And though sometimes it doesn't always make sense, there still can be a glimmer of answers or something within what you learn. Thank you everybody for watching. And we hope to see you next week for what is going to happen, A, with Emery um, and his chest, uh, B, with the pack and uh, who or what they're hunting or going to investigate, and C, what they're going to do with their new pups. I guess we'll find out. 
guess we'll find out. Thank, thank you, you everybody. Follows. Yeah, thank you everybody for the follows, for the raids, um, for all of the support. Um, we Subscribes. really, really appreciate it. Um, Subscribe. Yes, all the subs. Um, we will be back on Tuesday, uh, this Tuesday, for our uh, Magical Girls uh, Eclipsed Hearts game, uh, Girl by Moonlight, um, for episode two of that. And then next Friday, we will return for our second episode of Heart of the Pack, Werewolf of the Apocalypse. And of course, if you want to catch up on everything, go to our YouTube. If you missed some of this episode and want to catch the rest of it, it'll be up this weekend uh, so you can do all of your binging and watching. Thank you so much, everybody, for your support. And uh, we will see you in the next episode. Don't forget to howl at the moon. Ow! 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 <laughs> <laughs> Woo! <laughs>